one, walking dead bear back again to talk some more gear. Today I'm going to be talking about sleeping bags, so this is going to be a shorter video because I only have two sleeping bags to talk about. Uh, so anyways, and obviously, as always, I'm going to be talking about Sparkles gear uh, for these early videos. So without further ado, we'll jump in and we'll talk about her sleeping bags. So now, some things to know about sleeping bags when it comes to children that a lot of people don't think about when they go shopping or they're not aware of what it is that they're looking at or what they really need uh, is you're looking for a bag ideally for a child a three season bag um, however there are different needs for the winter time than the summer all right now the whole idea behind a sleeping bag is that it's supposed to insulate a person while they sleep if it's cold outside now the way this is done is the less dead space in the bag the better this is why especially in the winter time, it is essential that you get a sleeping bag that's made for a child. It's going to fit the specifications of a child's body versus an adult. If you take a child and you put them in a 15 degree down sleeping bag that's made for a six foot adult male, it's not gonna work as well. Simply put, there's gonna to be too much dead space, it's gonna be drafty. The child will probably be, get cold in the middle of the night. However, you buy the same bag and it fits a child, it should keep them nice and warm. So, the, the, the winter bag that I've got Sparkles, her three season bag is the 15 degree Little Red by Big Agnes. Now, the thing about Big Agnes bags, and you can tell it's, it, it, it's smaller, it, it fits, I think, children up into about 55, 58 inches in height. Now, Big Agnes bags have a unique feature, and this is true of all Big Agnes bags, so be aware of it if you go looking for one, and that is, that there is no insulation on the back of a Big Agnes bag. Now the reason for this is Big Agnes requires you to put a sleeping pad. And for a child's bag, you're probably going to want to get a smaller sleeping pad. Usually you can find them on sale. I think I got Sparkles for like $20 because not a lot of people are buying them. Uh, and they, they do the job. You could stick a bigger one in here, but it's going to obviously stick out above the child's head. Now. Like I said, so why does Big Agnes not put insulation on the backs of their sleeping bags, you may ask. Some of you may know the answer to this. For those that don't, it's simply because when you lay on insulation, especially if we're talking down and it gets compressed, it loses its insulating properties. So this is why for wintertime especially, they recommend that you get a sleeping pad because most sleeping pads have an insulative property to it. And so Big Agnes figures they'll save weight. All right, because no hiker likes to carry extra weight, and they'll just remove the insulated portion on the back and let the sleeping pad cover it. And I can tell you, it works for sparkles. My first long distance sleeping bag was a Big Agnes, and it worked for me in very cold weather. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with the bag. I've seen some bad reviews of Big Agnes products, and it has nothing to do with them not making the bag correctly, as some people assert. This is how they make them. This is just simply how Big Agnes bag is. And that's okay, all right? Now, we've talked about winter time, colder weather, early spring, late fall. You're gonna wanna have that three season bag, all right? Now, summertime is a totally different story. And summertime is where you might get away without buying your child a sleeping bag. You might be able to use one you already have. You might have flannel blankets you wanna pack. You might have a you know, down quilt that you might use. All those things work fine in the summertime because for the most part in the summer when you're hiking, rarely are you gonna see temperatures dip below 50 degrees even in the mountains. That's not to say I haven't hiked in for, I haven't slept in 40 some degree weather in the summertime I have, but rarely does it get down there. So your options are, are more wide open. You don't have to necessarily worry about dead space in a sleeping bag. So maybe if you have an extra light adult sleeping bag, you might bring that along. This summer, that's what we're doing for Sparkles, all right? Her mom has a Kelty Lightyear down bag, and this is it. And believe it or not, this thing, even though it's much longer than her Little Red, packs down much smaller. So I can actually fit my summer down bag, which is a Mount Bell, and this one, put them in their own stuff sacks, and I can fit them both in my sleeping bag compartment of my backpack, all right? so. I'm saving a little bit of weight and I'm saving space this summer. And 
you know, she's already climbed into this. This will keep her warm enough in the summertime. It'll, it'll keep the breeze off of her, which is all we're looking to do. In fact, if it gets, if it's warm enough, it's in the sixties, um, or even creeps up into the seventies this summer while we're hiking, then the, uh, she's probably going to sleep with the zipper undone and partly out of the bag. So just be aware you've got a little bit more freedom in the summertime than you do in the wintertime and you'll be fine. Uh, other than that, there's not too much else to say about kids sleeping bags. I will share that if you, if you really have some money to burn and you want to buy your child a down bag, although I don't necessarily recommend buying a down bag for a child until they're about nine or 10, uh, Feathered Friends does make some children specific down bags that are lighter. They're going to cost you over $200. You could also find some quilt manufacturers, some down quilt manufacturers that will make one to your specifications. You're also going to spend money on those as well. The reason why down isn't recommended a lot of times for children is because one, they can spill stuff on their sleeping bag and down loses its insulated properties when it gets wet. And the other thing is little ones can have accidents. So say you're out in the middle of nowhere, your child doesn't want to get out of their sleeping bag because they're cold and instead they have an accident in their sleeping bag and it gets all wet. Well, now you've got a sleeping bag for your child that isn't going to keep them warm until it gets dried out aside from the other issues with them having the accident in their sleeping bag. So something to be aware of. Synthetic materials, they will keep you warm even when wet. And this is why most sleeping bags you're going to find for a child are going to be synthetic. But anyways, that, that's all I really have to say about sleeping bags today. Uh, you know, if you have any comments, any questions you want to ask, feel free to hit me up. I'm more than happy to talk gear. But other than that, hi, God, hi, Kathy. And I'm out for now. Bye.